In this episode of Get Real with Rajiv, I'm going to be answering questions around how do you balance the desire of employees to gain financial growth, especially when the business is not growing. I'm also going to share about what are those tools beyond monetary benefits that are required to retain employees. I'm also going to share with you some top reasons of why people don't invest in learning. And finally, I'm going to share with you as a services professional, can you really build a business which can grow without you or not? So I look forward to seeing you in episode number 46 of Get Real with Rajiv. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 46 of Get Real with Rajiv. And like every single week, we are going to be answering four questions and today Bhakti is going to be the voice of your questions again. So Bhakti, what's the first question? Our first question is from Kaushal Gurnani. Talking of incentives and bonus, since the profit margins are shrinking, it sometimes becomes tough for us to give an increment every year and sometimes it makes an employee complacent too. So how to strike a perfect balance so that the business keeps growing as well as the pay scale of employees doesn't get affected? Well, wonderful question Kaushal. Let me put it this way that I want you to understand this. Business growth is the business owner's responsibility. Achieving goals in an individual's role is the team member's responsibility. A lot of times I've had entrepreneurs reaching out to me with the same query saying, Rajiv, my margins are decreasing, my business is slowing down, but my employees are expecting themselves to have a hike and an incentive or some kind of a financial reward or bonus every single year. How do I balance that? What you need to understand is this. It is very fair for an employee to expect a hike on an annual basis purely because of cost of living growing, inflation happening and their loyalty to the organization year on year they also want to grow financially. It is also very valid for your employees to expect a bonus or an incentive from the business as a reward for their performance. But if your business is not growing because of which you are depriving them of this financial growth opportunity, please understand it is very fair and valid for them to feel that they are meeting their end of the bargain, but the business owner is not meeting his or her end of the bargain. So as a business owner, remember one thing. If your profit margins are reducing, it's time to explore more profitable business models, most, more profitable products or services. It's time you become more aggressive about marketing and sales so that you increase the reach of your business. It's time you explore new verticals for your business so you expand the potential of your business. Because remember this, business growth is the business owner's responsibility. Individual goal achievement is the individual team member's responsibility. So we need to meet our end of the bargain by constantly enhancing the potential of the business and constantly growing the market share or the revenues and the profitability of the business so that we can give that growth opportunity to our team members. I hope that sets things in perspective for you, Kaushal. It's your time now to expand the business potential by exploring new opportunities, new product lines or new business models. With that, let's move to the second question for this week. So Bhakti, what's the second question? Our second question is from Shailesh Patel. What are the tools to retain employees other than monetary benefits? Where do most of the entrepreneurs fall short in general in this aspect? Well, Shailesh, wonderful question. So let me tell you something, uh, and this is not my work, so I would like to give due credit. I would like you to go on to YouTube and search for this video called The Surprising Truth About What Motivates People by Daniel Pink. In this video, Daniel Pink talks about a research that he conducted and it's not a research that is something that he did in the US. It's a research he did right here in India in Madurai where he said better pay does not necessarily lead to better performance. Pay people enough so that they are not thinking about uh, money at work, they are thinking about work at work. That is what the research of Daniel Pink talks about and he goes on to say that retention is a result of engagement and engagement is a result of 
how autonomous people feel at the workplace because today we live in an era where people just don't want to come to work and be the hand that is doing the work. They also want to be the head that is thinking and has a sense of freedom of creation. They also want to have that heart because they want a larger sense of purpose and they want a sense of challenge which is constant learning. Now keep in that in mind if you ask me what tools can a business owner use apart from monetary benefits. Firstly I'm saying monetary benefits is not the only thing. Pay them enough, reward them well but if you really want to retain people you need to engage them and I know this word engagement has been thrown around in HR circles, HR conferences like it's nobody's business but a H uh, an engagement system is a system where first step is you understand people's personal aspirations. It starts from there. Understand their short term, medium term, long term life goals, family goals, career goals. From there you design business goals and you design roles for those people in a manner where they contribute to the business goal so that the business can support them in achieving those goals. For me that is engagement. So from that point of view I would say understand people's personal goals, life goals, career goals. Involve them in co-creation of business goals. Tie up the business goal with a clear role, with a clear measurement metrics for these people and have a continuous system of review and when you're doing reviews please understand the objective of a review is not to blame people, the objective of a review is not to character assassinate or insult people, the objective of a review is to identify the gap and co-create the solution with the person who's not been able to accomplish the result and this is where entrepreneurs fall short because they don't understand what is leadership what is feedback? What is accountability? These are words that are loosely thrown around. Very few people understand the skills behind it and the real skill is actually to fill the gap and co-create a solution rather than blame, complain and create a conflict. I think if entrepreneurs and managers can make that shift, then they can truly earn people's commitment, truly engage them and retain them. I hope that makes sense, Salish. With that, let's move to the third question for this week. So Bhakti, what's the third question? Third question is from Prakash Nayak. Most people don't believe in investing on themselves in terms of learning. Why? Well, quite a few reasons, Prakash. I would say the first reason would be that learning in itself is a skill. And most people lack the skill of learning. Be it reading, be it attending seminars and workshops, listening to podcasts, or having a coach and being processed and being open to being coached. Most people don't have that capability and that ability to absorb and integrate things in their life. So learning is actually a skill which is missing in most people. The second reason is that I want you to understand this. Everybody on this planet claims they want to be successful. But hardly 2% or 3% of the planet is actually successful. Now I know most people will sit and type comments saying success is subjective, having money is not success. Neither am I saying that whatever your definition of success is, apart from it being comfort zone and complacency, whatever your definition of success is, is perfectly okay. But for you to achieve that desired level of success and I feel another integral part of success is constant growth and evolution, which means the journey never stops. For you to be able to constantly evolve and move to the next level, you need new skills and new knowledge. You need to be having the willingness to invest your time, money, energy and resources. Now most people want easy success. They are not willing to invest the time, money, energy and resources. So they rather sit back in comfort zones or they rather blame the rest of the world. Because being a helpless victim is any day easier than taking responsibility for one's own lives, one's own results, one's own emotions. So I would say most people want easy success which is not possible and it's very few people who have the fabric of success and one of those fabric of success is being a lifelong learner constantly learning and upgrading oneself which is missing in most people uh, across this planet. The other reason why I think a lot of people don't invest in learning is because they don't know how to find the right mentor and they get confused and overwhelmed by the oversupply of mentors especially on social media today. So the simplest way to identify the right mentor or the right coach would be look for a person who's produced the results that you desire to produce. When you look for a person who's produced the results that you, desi that you desire to produce, then you have resonance and then test that person, test that person's content, capability, track record, experience, 
uh, value system converse with that person connect with that person and if you feel resonance then continue the journey so i would say these are my three reasons of why i see most people not investing in their learning first learning is a skill that is missing second most people want easy success which is not real you got to be willing to invest time money energy and resources third most people don't know how to find the right learning partner learning mentor or learning coach uh, so i would say look for a person who's achieved the results that you desire to produce and i hope more people can become open to learning that's really my perspective with that let's move to the fourth and final question for this week's episode so bhakti what's the fourth question our fourth question is from vivek i'm a chartered accountant you talk about building a business where everything is not dependent on the business owner how is that possible in a services business like ours because our customers want to talk only to us and they don't like it when we put our team members to manage them well vivek you've given me the classic objection that every services professional that i come across gives me about my work be it a chartered accountant lawyer doctor trainer coach photographer interior designer architect building contractor all these services professionals have thrown this argument at me for the last 5 years and my response has not changed from the last 5 years and here's my response vivek think about it in your industry there are people who started as chartered accountants and built a chartered accountancy firm and a company where the owner himself or herself does not directly sit and interact with every single customer and handle every single customer which means there is somebody in every single industry who's built a brand who's built a large organization or a substantial size of a team where the owner is not involved in sitting and managing every single customer which means it is possible just because you don't know how to do it do not discard the possibility i always say this to entrepreneurs to say this to themselves lack of knowledge is not equal to lack of possibility i don't know does not mean it cannot happen be a seeker and be open to learning and figuring out how has that person done it you need to learn what that person knows so that you can do it and replicate it in your business so vivek Firstly let us set that myth and notion aside that in a services business it is not possible to build a business which is not running on the face value of the founder of that business that's a lie that's a myth it's a huge notion and unless we don't destroy that notion we are not going to seek a solution and be open so that is my response because in your industry itself there is an evidence of people who've done this what you desire to do or rather what you've discarded about doing now how do you do that well it's a journey it's a process there are three things that you need to focus on you need to focus on building the right team which will replace you in every single activity of the business you need to focus on building the right systems which are simple so that people follow those systems and you have a system driven business and you need to have strategies for growth profitability and for attracting the right customers and right employees only when you have the right team system and strategy will you be able to do this and vivek considering you asked me how do you do this i'm going to ask you to come and attend my business space program because this is exactly what i teach in the business space program on how do you build a team which is committed and competent how do you build systems which are simple and sustainable and how do you build strategies which are profitable and magnetic so that the business starts working without you so vivek it is possible the question is are you open to seeking a solution because every problem on this planet has a solution the challenge is most people are not looking for the solution they just accept the problem as a way of life and they cover up their incapacity incapability and incompetence of learning the solution with their ego and experiencing i've been in this industry for long enough so i know it is not possible i'm sorry look inside your own industry and you will see quite a few examples of people who built a services business which is working without them and their team is handling it in a competent and capable manner so with that we come to the end of episode number 46 of get real with rajiv now it's time for us to pick a winner who's asked the best question for the week who will get a copy of my book lead or bleed so bhakti who do you think is the winner because i feel we had some amazing questions today all right i'm going to go with bhakti's option the winner for uh, for this week's episode of get real with rajiv is question number 1 which was asked by kaushal gurnani 
by Kaushal Gurnani on the aspect of how do you satiate the financial growth desires of your team members when your business is not growing. I think in the existing times, it is a very, very relevant and apt question. So Kaushal, congratulations for asking that question. My team is going to reach out to you and we're going to make sure a copy of my book, Lead or Bleed, reaches you. Enjoy the read, my friend. And for the rest of you who've enjoyed this episode of Get Real with Rajiv, make sure you do the two things I ask you to do every single week. One, make sure you ask your questions in the comment section below or on this WhatsApp number that you see on your screen. And two, make sure you share this video on all your social media platforms, on your WhatsApp groups so that we can spread the knowledge and people can consume useful content that can support them in their business journey. With that, this is me Rajiv Tarreja signing off and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.